Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. This video is going to teach you a bit about post-processing effects for your posters and your designs and giving it some texture. This is a great way to add more life to your designs and give it the kind of scan look that everyone's after. So yeah, let's get started. Just to give an example, this is a poster that I did a while ago. It looks good already, but it could use some texture. And I've put some examples in here to show you what that could look like. So this is the original texturing I used. We've got some paper textures in here, some colored noise, some scan textures. We got some chromatic aberration going on, which you can see here with that RGB split where there's yellow and blue here. And we've got some slight color adjustments over the whole thing. So we can see if I turn this on and off, there's a little bit warmer of a tone in the shadows. And there's just more of a color spread throughout that we didn't have in the original. Here's another example. This one just has slightly different textures and a little bit more post-processing effects going on here. So if I zoom in, we can see we have that chromatic aberration again. We also have this colored halftone look going on in these details here. And there's more of a strong and opaque texture on the highlights of this image. And of course, there's that scan paper texture on the shadows as well as those color adjustments that we saw before, like the warmer tone in the shadows and so on. We also have some distortion going on here, which you can see if I zoom into the text, there's little ripples and just kind of like subtle ink bleed or displacement on there, which if I compare it to the original, you can see more clearly. And yeah, so I'm gonna show you how to add this kind of vintage texture to your work. It's really just a few simple steps. All you need is a few minutes and some textures. There are tons of textures out there. Some I would recommend are, of course, my own which I sell on my website, DuranSupply.com, and those are what I'm gonna be using in this video. But there's tons of um, companies out there that sell textures similar to what I sell. Definitely Black Market, I'm sure you've heard of them. They have great copy scan textures as well. I'll stop rambling. Let's just get into how we can get this effect on our images and our posters. Let's go. Cool, so just starting off with the original poster here, there are pretty much four steps that I've delineated to break this down for you to make it easier to see how we could take the poster from this to one of these examples. Those steps are to roughen it up, to texturize it, to desample it, and to add some final adjustments. So step one would be to roughen this original poster up. How can we do that? We can use the filters up in filter. You can go to distort and displace. You can use ripple, and you can also use crystallize. I personally like crystallize the best. I'm going to show you what that does in just a second. But if you have some nice displacement maps that you're used to using, then you can go ahead and use displace or you can use ripple. I personally don't like ripple that much, but it definitely works for some designs. So you can go ahead and experiment with that if you like. Of course, the first step here actually is to duplicate our layer. So I'm going to go ahead and press command J to do that. And now I'm going to roughen it up a little bit and I'm going to use the crystallize filter. So that's in pixelate or filter pixelate and then crystallize and you want to stick to a very low cell size for this i would recommend probably anywhere from three to seven we can see pretty clearly what it does to the edges of our image here just roughens them up a bit makes it less of a sharp edge but i do advise you to be careful because that does look good on the images but if you have text on your poster say like i do up here you get much more of a contrasting and harsh effect so I would stick to small numbers, probably three to five. I'm personally gonna go with three for this one. I'm gonna press okay. Cool, so now we've roughened it up a little bit. And another step I like to do in this stage is to just give it a really slight blur. So I'm gonna go into filter, blur, and just click blur here. That's gonna blur it just ever so slightly so we don't have those super harsh edges from the crystallize, say like on this text. It's a super slight effect, but I would recommend doing it just to kind of set that rough effect in. And if you don't think the effect is strong enough, you can always just use filter, blur, and blur more, which is essentially, I was actually told this by Adobe, is just blur twice. So instead of pressing filter, blur, blur twice, just press blur more. Ridiculous that they kept that feature in, but whatever. So we are done with the first step. We took our image, we duplicated it, and we roughened it a little bit using the crystallize filter and the blur filters. And now we're on to step two, which is to texturize our artwork. So this step is optional, as are any of these effects, but this particular effect is kind of an acquired taste. So do it if you will, but I personally like it. And that effect is called color halftone. So to do that, we're going to 
duplicate our image again and we're going to go to filter pixelate and color halftone and i'm like 90 percent sure these are the default settings the max radius might be set to eight by default i'm not sure either way default settings will work just fine just make sure the max radius is set to something sort of tiny in the five to ten range and this will also depend on the dpi of your document and you should always be working in a 300 dpi document i know i should have said that at the start but if you're designing a poster for print or just a poster in general your dpi should be set to 300 that standard that gives you a high resolution just do it set your dpi to 300 all right so back to this color halftone make sure that the radius is something between the 5 to 10 range i'm gonna go with six here and just press okay and this should be the effect that we get very tiny and if we zoom in here we can see how this effect operates it basically just half tones each channel of our image so we have the red green and blue channels of our image all half tones separately to create this really cool half tone effect here but obviously this is a bit too strong of an effect so what we're going to do is dial it down a bit by blurring it and the blur i like to use for this is box blur so that's in filter blur box blur and just use something small like one or two. This is just going to get rid of the kind of harsh lines and harsh um, edges on the halftones. So just use something very tiny. I'm going with two here. And after that blur, I'm going to do another blur. And this one is going to be a motion blur. So that's blur, motion blur. And also keep this one pretty tiny. Angle could be whatever you want. Play with that. But the distance, I'm going to keep it from two to four. I'm going to go with a slight four here just for a minimal effect. So we can see that added some nice kind of texture and I guess noisy halftone to our image, which is a look I really like. This is still a little bit too strong, so I'm just going to turn the opacity down to somewhere in the mid-range, 40, 50-ish, maybe even 30. I think for this I'll go with 40. And then once you've done that, you're just gonna wanna merge your halftone layer with the uh, layer we had before. So I'm gonna go ahead and select those two and then do Command, Alt, or Option E and that's going to make a merged copy of those two layers. All right, and now we're at the really fun part of this, which is just fucking adding a boatload of textures to this and making it look like it was scanned in or we left it in the dirt for 100 years and we just dug it up. So like I said, there are plenty of people that sell some good textures out there. For this video, I'm gonna be using my textures, which are available on my website. The pack is called Texture Scans Volume 1, if you wanna go get it, but yeah. Feel free to use whatever textures you prefer. Let's go ahead and start slapping these on here like we do as graphic designers. I've singled out a few of my textures that I really like, such as these scan and paper textures. I'm gonna go ahead and drag one of these on here and then scale it up to size. This is a darker texture, so I'm gonna set this to either lighten or screen. And these pretty much do the same thing. Screen is a bit more of a drastic effect. I'm gonna go with the screen just because it has more of a comprehensive effect over all the colors in the image and I'll adjust for that later with the brightness, but I like how screen looks for this particular image. Cool, we're already getting some nice texture in this, but I wanna add just a tad more, so I'm gonna bring in another paper texture. I'm gonna go for paper 12 for my pack, and I'm gonna bring this up to size, and I'm gonna set this to screen as well, but this one I want some really harsh contrast on. So I'm gonna go ahead and press Command L, and then I'll bring me to my levels panel, and I'm just gonna bring these dials in really close, really tight together, just around this Gaussian distribution looking thing that we have here. And as you can see, that's gonna crank the contrast up quite a bit. We don't want it to be this strong, obviously, so I'm gonna play with this until it looks right. But adding more contrast to your texture means you can get more out of it and you see more of those details come through in your design. So I'm gonna go ahead and play with this until I find something that looks about right. I'm gonna go with this and then I'll just turn the opacity down to about 50 or 60. And this looks good, but it kind of messed with the colors of our design. So what I'm gonna do is add a levels adjustment above these two layers. And I'm just gonna bring the mid-tones to the right a bit and that's gonna darken our image and make up for the brightness that we gained adding those textures. Cool, I like how this is looking, but we only added textures to affect the shadows part of this design, so it's only affecting the blacker parts because we set these textures to screen, and I want something that affects more of the highlights, more of the white parts, such as the text and the glow that's going on here. 
So how we could do that is either by taking one of these textures, duplicating it, and setting it to multiply, and inverting it so that it's a lighter version of itself, which is a cool effect, but I would rather just take a actual paper texture that's light and drag it on top of here and set that to multiply. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, so I'm going to drag one of these vintage paper textures in. Again, this is from my texture scans pack. And I'm going to scale this up to size. And I'm just going to set that to multiply. And this is kind of cool. It looks like an old book, but it's a little too saturated and too heavy for me. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the saturation down by pressing Command U on my keyboard and turning this tile down a bit. And then I'm going to mess with the levels as well by pressing Command L and bringing these highlights in to make this a bit brighter and the midtones in as well just to add some contrast. And I'll just play with this until I find something that fits. So this looks pretty cool. Then I'm going to turn the opacity down a bit. And now we have effectively textured our artwork and it's looking pretty cool. It looks like uh, we left it in a public bathroom stall for about 10 days, which is the effect we're going for, right? Anyway, now we've got the bulk of this done. So what we're going to do is merge everything that we see here using the keyboard shortcut, Command, Option, Shift, E. And that's going to merge everything visible on our canvas into one single layer. So the third step that we're going on to here is to desample this, which just means to me kind of lose more quality than we've already lost, just so it looks a little bit more like it's been scanned in and been roughened up. So how I do that is just adding some more blurs to this. And then I'm also going to go ahead and add the chromatic aberration effect that we saw before. So for the blurs, I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this layer and add some motion blur and some box blur, just like we did before. So I'll go ahead and use about a one or two pixel box blur. I'll go with one here just so it's not too drastic of an effect. And then for the motion blur, I'll use a similar value like we did before. So four to six. I'll actually just go with six for this one. And that's going to give us... A nice desampled effect here. So if I turn this layer off, you can see that it just brings it all together, makes it more cohesive with the textures that we just slapped on here. And we know that the devils are in the details with all this stuff. So you just want to make sure you get all that right so that when you zoom into your artwork, it's all pretty and looking good. All right, now for that chromatic aberration effect, it is very simple. All you have to do is duplicate your layer and then go into the layer styles of this new duplicate and turn any of these channels off. You can turn two of them off, you can turn one of them off. I personally like only turning off the blue because that gives that yellow blue split and it's not too much of a harsh contrast between the colors and it's not too visible. It's just a very nice subtle effect that I enjoy putting on my posters. But of course, you're free to play with this and turn off and turn on any channels that you like. So I'm just gonna turn off the blue. I'm gonna press okay. And I'm gonna nudge our layer by pressing the arrow keys either to the left or to the right or up and down or both, whichever you want. And this is just going to mess with the channels of our image and kind of split them in a way that looks like this really cool chromatic apparition effect going on. Now, I will be careful when you do this because as you nudge it, you're gonna see that in the corners of your image, they are no longer aligned with the original canvas size. So you might wanna go ahead and upscale this so you don't see that kind of other part of your your layers peeking through. So that's what I'm gonna do later on after I merge this, but just keep that in mind. But either way, we've got this nice chromatic aberration effect going on here, and it looks really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and merge all of this. We can do that again by using the keyboard shortcut, Command Option Shift E, which is a hell of a lot of keys to press, but you got it. So now I'm just gonna upscale this to get rid of those edges that we saw earlier. I'm gonna press OK. And now it's time for the final effect, which is the final effect, the camera raw adjustment filter. And this just allows us to pretty much add some final adjustments and color alterations to our image. So to get here, you just have to go to filter, camera raw filter. This is pretty much the same thing as Lightroom if you've ever used Lightroom. But yeah, so we have a ton of effects here that we can use to adjust our image. I'm gonna turn the temperature up, which is an effect that I like. But of course you can play with any of these settings to your likings. Make sure you do this on a per image basis. Obviously these effects are gonna vary from poster to poster and from design to design. So just experiment with this and see what works. I'm gonna go ahead and find some effects that I like. So I like when I turn the temperature up. I'm gonna turn the exposure up just a bit to get more of those whites peeking through. Maybe turn the contrast down 
shadows down as well. And the slider that I really like to play with actually is the clarity slider. And this kind of gives us a really cool hazy effect if we turn it all the way down. Obviously, I don't want to turn it all the way down, but you could play with that effect for sure. And if you turn it up, you get this really sharpened effect. So definitely something to play with or find out what works for your image. Okay, so I've messed with enough of these effects to get the look that I want. I think it's always important to just do some final processing on your stuff, just to tweak it to make it the best it could be. I'm going to press OK, and boom. This is the final look that we've got. This is quite the difference from the original poster. So if I turn this off and check out the original poster, we can see quite clearly how we've added enough texture and post-processing effects to make this look like it was printed out and scanned in, or I don't know, it kind of looks like more than that. <laughs> it looks like we did something horrible to this and then scanned it in, which is a really cool effect. Obviously, you could dial in the amount of texture and all that you want, but I personally like when it looks pretty grungy. Experiment with all these effects to your will. I hope you learned something in this video. Thank you for watching. As always, do not forget to go to my website and download all the free stuff that I have available for you. That is DuranSupply.com. Go down to the freebies, click on View All, and go down all the way to the bottom of the webpage and sign up to that mailing list. And you'll get emailed a link to a bunch of free downloads, which includes things like my Xerox effects, my film glow effects, and so on. Would highly recommend you go download those. Hope this helped. Peace out.